Welcome, everyone. Feel free to take a seat. <coughs> oh, there you are. That's not uh, so I, I appreciate everyone's patience. I don't know how many of you all out there are teachers. Uh, when I was a classroom teacher, I often never planned the timing out correctly, found myself rushing at the end or moving the rest of the lesson to the next day. And that still happens in my role as an administrator. So uh, thank you for being patient and wait, at least it's a nice day outside. Um, we're super excited that you're all here this morning. So we have this first part of the session which is um, you know, a lot of information. I just wanna tell you all two things. One, everything that's in your packet, I will email to you. This PowerPoint, I will email to you. So please don't worry about like taking, you can take them, take pictures, it's feel, feel free, but just so you know, you'll still get all that information electronically as well. On the little notebook that was handed out to you at the beginning of this is a little QR code as well as a, um, the link itself. I don't, whatever your preference is, I can never get those QR codes to work myself. Um, and that's where you can submit your questions. Because we have to do this in three sessions, I want anyone who asks a question to have everyone hear it and get the answer because it's often applicable to multiple people. If you submit a question that's very specific to your student, great, I'll just answer you directly. All right, and I'll send out like an FAQ at the end of next week, so a fre frequently asked questions. So thank you all for being here. So I am Anthony Chiariello. I'm the assistant principal for admissions here at Minuteman High School. I have met every single one of your students through their interviews. I've met many of you during tours, uh, interviews, all different kinds. I'm the guy on all those parent presentations. So you know, sorry you've had to see my face throughout the course of this, pre this uh, process. But I've really enjoyed meeting your students and all of you through it. Uh, thank you for coming out on us beautiful Sunday morning. Um, we're excited that the rain held up for us, but we know it's, you know, we know you want to be here, so we appreciate you being here. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues in just a moment. I just want to kind of tell one little quick story that I've, I've mentioned to everyone is um, we had our graduation on the 4th. Um, it was really exciting. It was nice to have everyone together again in our our school, our class, pre our senior class president, Lucy Kachenka, who's from Arlington and was in our carpentry shop. She talked about her, who she was a little bit when she was your students in their position, in eighth grade coming into Minuteman. And she talked about how she didn't really think that much of herself, right? She didn't see herself as exceptional in any particular way. And over the course of the four years that she spent here at Minuteman, you know, giving him the chance to find what she loved to do and what she did well and, you know, all the opportunities that come along with coming to a school like Minuteman, you will not find a more exceptional young person than Lucy. Many people in this school are, but Lucy is one of the most exceptional people I've met. So if you have a student who has not yet figured out what makes them great, then they're in the right place because they will find out how they are great and how they can be exceptional. So I'm incredibly excited for you to be here, for your students to be coming to our school. And with that, and the folks that are going to talk to you today and that you'll meet at the meet and greet are the reason why those students figure out, you know, what's going to make them great. Sorry, I get a little fired up when I start talking about this stuff. Um, so I'm going to start with um, our principal. So oh, sorry, one thing about the packet that you have here that I want to point out to everyone. So in there is called the contact cheat sheet. So what that is is like, you know, your new parents in a new school, who do I call for what, right? So like, who do I call for attendance? Who do I call for the nurse's office? Who do I call for X, Y, and Z, IT, stuff like that? It's all in there. I'm going to email it to you, but I tell you this because in the next month or so, we're gonna transition from me talking to you all the time to you talking to all of these folks who run the day-to-day -day operations of the school. I'll miss you, but I'll be excited for you to join the greater community here. <coughs> so I just wanna point that out to you. All right, so now I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna turn it over to our principal, Mr. George Clement. Thank you, Tony. Great work. Again, hi, my name is George Clement. I serve as the principal, and it is my pleasure to welcome you here to Minuteman. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration, we are really excited to have you join our family. This is a place of opportunity, passion, and energy, and you can feel it from the student volunteers who are here today that met you outside. They're great kids. They love this place a lot to be able to show up here on a, on a Sunday morning. 
and they are why this school is so awesome. So if we could, could we just acknowledge them with a round of applause, because they're just awesome. We like to say that we are high school revolutionized because we deliver full academics alongside a valuable career and technical education. We help students aspire to their full potential, accelerate their learning, and achieve a competitive advantage to help them get ahead in their college and career plans. It's the synergy of top flight academics and career training which will help our kids cope and compete in this complex world. Only at Minuteman can kids discover what they love to do, what they do well, and how to turn that into an economic opportunity that will make them happy and independent. We deliver a personalized and relevant education, and we take the time to invest in the success of each student. Our kids will learn, and they will learn how to learn. They will develop skills, earn impressive credentials, and they will leave here ready to take on the future. I have spent 30 years in education, working in three states and in many buildings, but this faculty and this group that you see in front of you is far and away the best. In 2018, we were one of three vocational schools in the nation to win a National Blue Ribbon Award for the gains our students made. In 2020, we became the first ever high school to win the Massachusetts Reading Association's Outstanding Reading Program because we integrate literacy into the curriculum in all areas. And while other places floundered during the pandemic, our entire faculty reported here for work every day because we are about results. Our professional industry-recognized instructors are committed people who care about each student's unique needs. Our team is competent, caring, and collaborative. Our teachers, our support staff, our students, and our families are why Minuteman is leading a revolution in learning. I want to thank Mr. Chiriello for his excellent work guiding you through the admissions process and organizing this event. Today you will get to meet the people who run this school and make it special. We cannot wait to begin teaching your children and working with you over the next four years. We cannot wait to return to normal. We have this pristine new building. We have new athletic fields on the way and new dreams to help our students pursue. Please enjoy the remaining speakers who have prepared an overview of operations that make our school a great, safe, and engaging place to learn. First up is our lead from guidance, Ms. Diane Dempsey. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. I said it earlier, I hate following Mr. Clement. He likes public speaking. I don't. <laughs> I just like working with kids. It's nice to see you adults, but I prefer kids. Um, so as we mentioned, um, we, have a, uh, we have a ninth grade, dedicated ninth grade guidance counselor. I'm the lead guidance counselor. I work with uh, students in the trades hall in grades 9, 10, uh, in grades 10, 11, and 12. Lisa Camagna is the ninth grade guidance counselor. So I really urge you all to get to know Lisa. Uh, she works with all the ninth graders as they transition to Minuteman every year. And then she transitions them to one of the three other guidance counselors. And then we work with your students uh, for the remaining three years that they're here 
and really help them as they ex continue to explore their vocational programs and then as they continue to decide what they want to do post Minuteman and um, explore the world after high school. Um, so uh, as they continue through their um, years of Minuteman, um, and we work with them on a four-year career plan. So as they enter Minuteman, they go through the exploratory process, and that really helps guide them through what they want to do while they're here, through their exploratory, and then while they're here, deciding what they want to do after high school, whether it be college, careers, or military. Um, and that starts right when they enter the doors here at Minuteman. So as far as their ninth grade schedule, that schedule is built on what they've already done with that placement test that they already did, uh, that Anthony set them up with for that placement testing. That, we use the placement testing, the current school recommendation that they did, their current guidance counselor submitted a recommendation, as well as the writing sample that they did and submitted to us. So we use those three pieces, use the Lexile score, then we come up with their schedule um, that schedule is mailed home over the summer. That still can be tweaked. You can reach out to Lisa um, in the fall to look at that. Um, those are, like I said, those are mailed home over the summer. We really try to make the most rigorous schedule that we can. Um, and uh, particularly in the math, make sure that your student is taking the most rigorous courses that they can. Um, and the math is really what we want to make sure we're pretty flexible in our scheduling. Um, you'll hear from all of the leads today. Um, as far as we really have to, we're, you know, we're taking students from all of the local sending schools. Um, so it's not like we have one school that we're just taking the recommendations from. We're looking at all the different schools. So we really try to map everything together and give your student the right courses. Um, but really be in touch with Lisa if you feel your student is misplaced and we will do the best that we can to get your student in the right courses. Um, but make sure they're taking the most challenging and rigorous courses they can be taking. We're on a week about format. You'll hear that terminology a lot. So it's one week of academics, one week of their vocational. The only thing that's a little bit different is freshman year. Freshman year during their CTE week, they do take math and English every every single day. So right before their shop, they have math and English, and then they head into their CTE major. Um, we work with them through their exploratory. Katie will talk about that in her presentation, but Lisa Magna will work with them through the exploratory and really spending a lot of time making sure they're exploring everything with an open mind when they come here. Um, we work with the kids on social emotional, especially after the last year. We want to make sure that they're healthy. Um, obviously, college and career counseling, that starts early, right through, right through the gate here at Minuteman. Um, so we want to welcome you. Um, spend your time getting to know your counselors here. We hope everybody um, gets to know all of us, all of, your, all of the counselors here at Minuteman. So welcome. Thank you for coming. And the next person up is Katie Bouchard. Good morning, my name is Katie Bouchard. I'm the Career and Technical Education Director here at Minuteman. Um, I want to give you an overview of our academy model. Uh, so you'll hear the word academy used a lot today. So it's our education model that really brings together our career and tech majors and our academics. Um, so it's not uncommon at all to head down to the automotive program and you'll see our physics teacher in there talking about gears and ratios. If you walk into one of our English classes, you might also see one of our history teachers in there. And again, it's bringing more relevance to our students' education. So it's this great philosophy that we use here at Minuteman. Our new building was designed with this model in mind uh, to support it. So we have programs with similar curriculum that are placed next to each other. We have areas such as uh, Technology Office Innovation Lab, our toil space, which has things like 3D printers in it, um, and just a communal area where students and classes can come together to work on group projects. Um, we also have shared academic classrooms, which might also be re used as related rooms, so using the theory part of our vocational shops in those classrooms as well. 
Um, you will have a copy of this in your folder, but to list out all the programs that we have here at Minuteman with our academy model, we have two different academies. We have our Engineering, Constructions, and Trades Academy, and then we have our Life Sciences and Service Academy. Within those two academies, we have five different pathways, and within those pathways, we have 19 different career majors. Um, so our 19th major, which we're entering into this fall, is uh, Animal Science, uh, which we're very excited about and we have a lot of student interest in. So how does the whole process work? So students come here, they complete some career assessments. Those help students see what they're good at um, and what would be good career matches for them. Uh, we have every student go through a mini exploratory process. So each student goes through all of our career majors during that first week uh, that they're in their programs, and they decide what they like the most. Um, so some students might come here not knowing what advanced manufacturing is, but they'll go through it as part of the exploratory process to see if that's a program that matches their interests. After they do that week, they'll go through each program for about an hour. Uh, students will choose their top couple of choices to re-explore. So they'll go back to those programs for about a week, um, and then come the January, February time frame, they'll actually pick their top three majors that they would like to enter, that they will hopefully be in from freshman year all the way till the end of their uh, graduating senior year. So just some things to keep in mind when students are in exploratory, safety is of course um, the utmost important because these students are doing hands-on work. We're not talking about changing a tire, they're changing a tire. We're not talking about using pipettes in biology and biotech, they're actually doing it themselves. Um, so again, just please remind your students to dress for safety in terms of make sure that they're wearing safety glasses, we'll give them an issued pair from the school. Um, make sure they're wearing pants during the exploratory process. When they're wearing shorts, um, they're not as safe and make sure that they're wearing closed-toed shoes. Um, students are graded during the exploratory process based on a rubric uh, that really looks at their conduct, their ability to follow instructions, task completion, uh, attendance, punctuality. Um, this is going to be a large freshman class, so we do expect that there will be some wait lists. So again, we use those rubrics to determine um, how we break up the wait list. You know, if we have 100 kids that have 100, um, then we have 70 kids that have 90s, you know, that's how we determine the program placement. So please talk to your students about making sure that they're adhering to those rubrics and the written instructions of the classroom teachers. That being said, with your program decisions for your students, talk to your kids. What did you enjoy about those programs? What did you not enjoy about those programs? Uh, finding out what your students like is just as important as finding out what your students don't like in this whole exploratory process. Um, I really highly encourage you to listen to what your students want to do. Um, when we get into these programs as a previous programmatic teacher, I would say, oh, why'd you come here? And they go, because my dad said I had to. Okay, so again, please, please, please. Um, and you know, two weeks later, you know, the kid's going, I don't like this. I wanted to be in biotech. Um, so again, please have these conversations with your students and make sure that you're, they're following their passions of what they want to go into. Um, th with the whole exploratory process, their freshman year, we really look at it as a flexible year. If they're in plumbing for three weeks and they decide that's not for them, that's okay. Um, and that's why we do have wait lists, because if a student chooses to leave a program, a spot will open up. Um, we do ask students to be majored by the end of their sophomore year um, in order for them to be qualified for more certifications and earn hours towards licensure moving forward. Again, after their decision is made, you'll receive more information from that specific program teacher. If there's any specific uniform that your student needs to purchase um, or wear, if there's any tools of the trades or any type of kits, um, syllabus, books, etc., all that stuff will be sent home. Um, the last thing I just want to mention is co-op. Um, one of the huge perks of going to a vocational school is a co-op program. So our students attend their academic uh, classes one week, and then the following week they can go out on co-op where they go to work. So some of your students might be making 400 500 bucks during the week, then they go to academics, then they go back to their job. Um, it gives them real world experience while they're still in high school. So it's definitely a huge perk and one of those things that a lot of our students strive for towards the ends of their careers here at Minuteman. Um, so thank you. And I'm going to introduce Heather Plater, who is our athletics director and one of our physical education teachers. Good morning. Um, my name is Heather Plater. I am the athletic director and one of the physical education teachers. I've been teaching for 21 years and I've been the AD for six. So I've got to experience this whole transition, leaving the old building, tearing it down, watching them 
build our beautiful facility, and finally, it is here, or it's coming, and I'm happy to say we should be on that by October. So I'm excited. Um, so we have 14 varsity sports programs here at Minuteman. Um, we can have sub-varsity level as well, but that comes down to numbers. So if we have enough interest in each sport, we can create those sub-varsity programs. Um, our basketball teams do have sub-varsity level, but others we have to kind of wait and see. Um, we have a no user fee. We have no cut policy as well. So if your son or da daughter is kind of on the unsure, you know, have them come try out. You know, it's, it's a great learning experience. They can learn how to play. They can learn how to be part of a team. Um, and they can get a lot of good positive benefits about being on a team and learning how to play. We have um, sports buses every Monday through Thursday. Fridays, um, we require you to pick up your son or daughter. Um, each week, the sports bus schedule will change. Uh, I usually send that schedule out to the school and they post it um, the Thursday or Friday before the following week. Um, and there's a couple different logistics that go into it, um, but to keep it simple, um, if multiple teams are on the road, the wait time is a little bit longer. Um, so we will try to get that information out to you as fast as possible. Um, you should have received an email last week from John Camerata. He sent out the fall sport registration packet. Um, if your son or daughter plays another sport during another season, the same process will happen um, before the winter and before the spring season. So if they're interested in playing football, girls soccer, boys soccer, golf, cross country, cheerleading, or a volleyball club, they can register now for those sports. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to me um, via email. If for some reason you did not get that packet or that, that email, you can go on to the Minuteman website and under athletics, it is on the first link under Minuteman Athletics right at the top of that page. You can click that link and it'll bring you right to the Microsoft document to fill out. Um, okay, now as for phys ed, we have a half year program. It's semester one and semester two. Um, we do a variety of different activities. I try to build our program around like a fitness club environment. So what we try to do is a little bit of everything. So we'll do some team sports, such as ultimate frisbee, basketball, volleyball, sports like that. Um, we'll do some lifetime activities, pickleball, badminton, We'll do fitness, yoga, circuit training. We'll touch upon nutrition. Um, and we're going to incorporate a new activity this year, which I've never done before. It's new. I'm just kind of excited about doing it. It's called orienteering. So we'll be able to do some stuff all around campus. And I think that will be um, a good learning experience for all of us. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. So if you have any questions about either athletics or PE, you can send me an email and I'll be glad to help you out. Thank you. Next up, Sarah Bolduck. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, one of the nurses here at Minuteman. There's two nurses in the health office. It's myself and Annie. Our top priority is keeping your child healthy and safe, but in order to do that, we need some information prior to the first day of school. We do request that an annual student health form be completed each year. This updates us on any changes to your child's medical history, as well as provides your permission for medications such as Tylenol, Ibuprofen, and Tums, which we keep on hand in our health office. A recent physical exam and list of immunizations is also required for school admission, and we need time to review these before school starts. So we ask that you send them in as soon as possible if that's not something you've had a chance to do so already. A current physical is also required annually uh, for sports. 
if your child has a life-threatening allergy, asthma, seizures, or diabetes, a safety or action plan from their provider will need to be submitted annually to our office before the start of school. At the high school level, it's the responsibility of the student to carry their emergency medications with them every day. They will not be permitted to leave the building for field trips or school-related outings unless they have their medications with them. A backup supply can be kept in the health office, specifically for your child if you choose to do so. Please contact us if your child needs to take a medication during school hours. All medications, with the exception of EpiPens, inhalers, and diabetes medications, will need to be administered in the health office by one of the nurses. Uh, students are not permitted to carry or take any other medications while at school, uh, but if your child has ADD or ADHD um, and they need a dose during, of their medications during school, as long as you fill out the medication permission form and have your provider sign it, that's something we can accommodate for them during the school day. And a parent does have to drop off the medication. The students can't bring it in. Um, we have a nurse's office website on Minuteman.org. The site is updated regularly by us and has all the required forms and information that I've talked about today available. Um, regarding COVID-19, we know it's been a really long year for everyone, especially the students, so we will continue to monitor the situation over the summer and keep updated on any return to school protocols. New information will be updated on the Minuteman website and emailed to families as well if there's anything specific that you need to know prior to the start of school. With the ease of technology and texting, often students will reach out to a parent or guardian if they're not feeling well during school hours. If we do ask, if you, do, if you hear from your child and they're asking you to pick them up due to illness, please direct them down to our office so we can assess them and determine whether or not they really do need to go home. Dismissals will not be excused for illnesses without being seen by one of the nurses in the office. We appreciate you taking the time to send in all the required health paperwork and forms. We know sometimes it can be a lot to ask. And we ask that you keep in mind that the health office is not staffed all summer by a nurse. Um, we're kind of here a little bit more sporadically, so don't be surprised if there's a little bit of a delay, but we will get back to you. We do keep the um, automatic replies from our email up to date so that when you get a reply from that system, it should give you an update as to roughly like when you might hear back based on the dates that we'll be back in the building. Uh, the best way to contact us is by email. Uh, it's nurse at minuteman.org. Um, we hope that you all have a great summer. We look forward to meeting all the kids in the fall. And I'm going to introduce Assistant Principal Brian Tilsley to talk about transportation. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Mr. Mr. Clement, I think... Um, Sarah, as well as Katie, mentioned the word safety, and that's, that applies with transportation as well. So I don't want any parent right now to feel anxiety about transportation. It's, gonna, it's a tall task here. It really is. We're a geographically spread out district. We have a lot of buses. We work with a private transportation company called NRT. NRT is located in Bedford. We have a great fleet. We have a lot of buses, 2018, 2019 buses. Right now, we're working on the routes as we speak. So we have your home addresses. What we do with in-district students is we punch those routes into a software package that NRT runs and they get the stops as close as they can to where you all live. So what we'll do is we'll post those soon, hopefully in July, towards the end of July. You'll go on the website, you'll see the routes, and then you'll find your stop based on your address. Now, if you go on those routes, and you see that the stop just isn't jiving, whether it's a safety issue, whether, well, I don't like this corner, if it's too far, then you contact us and we work with you to fix that. Most of the time we're in good shape early on. We do have some minor glitches, but again, we'll work with you to get them here safely. I know coming in today, I saw a lot of parents separating off from their kids and sort of looking at them as they walked away. And it was sort of funny. And I said, well, that's what it's like putting them on the bus for the first time, especially coming here because we got people coming from all over. So we've been at it a long time. I've been here um, a lot of years, like everybody else up on this panel, so we're gonna get them here safe. I want you to be, um, bear with us on that. Don't, don't get nervous around July time frame. We're gonna get those stops up, and you'll be able to see them, and then call us and we'll work it all out. Out of district students, a little bit different. You can come see me or, or come contact me at a later time, and we'll get in touch with your superintendent's office. 
that's a little bit different, but we'll still work with them on getting you here on based on smaller vehicles like vans and such. I want to talk about the dismissal time. So 2.30 every day, Monday through Friday, is our typical dismissal. At 2.30, we have the buses out front. At that time, you can pick up your child if you're a car rider. If your children get old enough someday to drive to school and have the capability, they can do so as well. 2.30, Monday through Friday, we usually send the buses around 2.40. We never like to leave students behind here, because of our again, because of our towns. It's very different leaving a Le Lancaster student behind. So we like to hold the buses, get everybody on board, and get them off. Late buses, 3.30. 3.30, we're going to hold a late bus on Thursdays this fall. So what that late bus is for is for extra help in classes, and it's for small little meetings for activity meetings. That late bus is a little bit more spread out as far as stops go. So that late bus, that along with the sports buses that Mrs. Plater mentioned, are not going to get you as close as your normal stop was. So I'll give you an example. If you live in Arlington, it's not going to get you right to your stop, but it could get to, to Arlington Library, could get you to the high school, that type of thing for the later buses. What I do recommend for those is have your students have something to do, meaning they need to be with a teacher or be at an activity. We, we, we don't really want kids hanging out after school because our supervision goes a little bit down in the afternoon, whereas during the day, it's, our supervision's really good. So we want to make sure there's no hanging out. Same thing with the sports buses. Athletes or students involved in activities are allowed to take those buses in those range, like Mrs. Plater talked about on time frame. But we get that out weekly, so you'll be in, you'll be in the know. Help with anything is important. I'm at, I'm at the front of the building, myself and Miss Mixon, we deal with everything around operations in the school day. Dismissals, tardies, anything you have going on, deal with us and we'll help you out. All right? We're always available to take calls, emails. The first number there is the, the bus company as well. So far, we are in our second year with them. We've contracted them out and they've been great. So it's a big deal to transport your kids. We know that. We take it very seriously and we expect safe riders and safety on buses. And um, if there's anything moving forward as the summer goes on, don't reach out to, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm going to move it on to Ms. Pisapia, our special ed department. Okay, I don't need it anyway. Hi, I'm Ashley Pisapia. I'm one of the Special Education Academy leads here at Minuteman. There's two of us, myself and Michael Garino. Most of you, if your student is on an IEP, you have had a transition meeting already. If not, then it'll happen shortly. Between the two of us, we'll be running all of the IEP meetings uh, next year for your students. Our department consists of 10 special education teachers, we have a couple school psychologists, a speech and language pathologist, um, school adjustment counselor, two of those, I think I'm missing someone, but um, that's okay, and some paraprofessionals that'll be in the classroom setting. Some of the services that we offer, we have a full inclusion program. Um, we have, whoop, I just touched that. I don't know what's happening there. I don't know what you guys are seeing. Um, so we have a full inclusion program, meaning that we have co-taught classes, we have a special education teacher in the room with a reg regular education teacher. Um, we have individual counseling as needed if your child requires that. We have speech and language services as well. So those are some of the services that we offer. I don't know what happened to the slideshow, so I'm not sure what you guys are seeing, but Eric, do you want to? I think you guys are now looking at Mr. Chirlel's Gmail, so. <laughs> it was frozen. There we go. All right. Uh, so like I said, COTA classes, academic support classes, speech and language, individual counseling. Your students will be assigned a liaison. Um, that liaison is kind of your go-to person and your student's go-to person for the year. That's who you will contact if you have questions, if your students have questions. Um, that is their go-to person. Like I said, all students will have a transition meeting. Michael Garino is actually in um, next door, so when you guys do a meet and greet, you will be, um, have a chance to meet him. By law, we are required to have a Minuteman Special Education Parent Association. 
We are encouraging you guys to get involved with that because it really is important to have your voice heard, your students' voices heard as well. Okay, we look forward to working with all of you this coming year. Next up, Connie Maynard. Buenos dias, bonjour. My name is Connie Maynard, and as you've probably already guessed, I'm one of the world language teachers at Minuteman. I am also the lead for the humanities department, which comprises social studies, art, and music, in addition to language. Minuteman is pleased to offer two language choices, Spanish and French. Using the language experience approach, language teachers engage the learner in reading, writing, speaking, and vocabulary instruction as an interwoven experience which fosters language production in both the spoken and written language. Freshmen entering Minuteman can either start in the first year of Spanish or French, or if they have already been taking, taking a language in middle school, continue to the second year of the language. Students who are interested in a four-year college are recommended to take at least two consecutive years of the same language. After completing those two years, they may continue to the third year of the language in Spanish and French, or they may elect to take the alternative language if they wish. Integration is an important aspect of Minuteman's school-wide goals, and an example of a project that we've undertaken in language involves students and preschools of Minuteman's early education um, career major. Students from Spanish and French classes go to Minuteman's Colonial Children's Academy weekly and teach Spanish and French vocabulary to the preschoolers, each language student partnering with one or two pre preschoolers. Minuteman's language students learn the basis, basics of language acquisition, while the preschoolers learn basic theme vocabulary in the second language. It is a partnership that has brought pride and joy to the language students and the preschoolers. All freshmen take world civilization for their social studies class where they are introduced to ancient human civilizations and human cultures. Minuteman offers three levels of world civilization, honors, college prep one, and college prep two. Two popular integration projects in this course is practicing yoga with the physical education department and practicing, practicing Chinese calligraphy with the art department. Sophomore year, students take U.S. History I, once again offered at three levels, all at honors, college prep one, and college prep two. Junior year, qualified students may take United States History after 1865, which is an honors in dual enrollment class. U.S. History II is also offered as an honors, college prep one, and college prep two class. Senior year, the students have several course choices in history. Qualified students may take Introduction to Psychology as a dual enrollment class or a College Prep One course. They may also choose from the Modern Era, which is an honors course. They can also choose United States History and the Cinema as a College Prep One class or Civics as a College Prep One or Two course. Minuteman is proud to offer art and music as electives to our students. In visual arts, freshmen can choose between traditional studio and digital photography. While in music, students have a host of offerings, chorus, guitar, keyboard, instrumental lab, and music production. Thank you, and I'd like to introduce John Fusco, Leach of um, Math Department. Thank you, Connie. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is John Fosco. I'm the math department chair, um, and I'm just going to speak a little bit about math today and uh, assure you that we're going to do the best with your students, the incoming students, next year. Uh, and I think an important piece of what we want to talk about is, is our goal here is to help our students achieve to become the best problem solvers they can. That's, that's our philosophy. So also talk to you a little bit about technology, some extras, and then what the school is basically all about, integration. So part of that philosophy is, is getting students placed correctly and what more important time is freshman year, like Diane was 
alluding to earlier. So what we want to do is we've, we've given out placement tests. The kids have gotten their grades. Uh, they haven't gotten the grades. We got the grades. We're going to put them into the uh, appropriate math class. We also try to, uh, at the beginning of the year, we're going to have an algebra inventory test. We want to make sure that we get them placed so that we're challenging them and putting them in the appropriate math, math way, as I like to call it. Um, and within that, you can see freshman year is the most important, which we have an Algebra 1A and Foundations, which is a slower-paced algebra curriculum where Foundations helps work with kids. So there's two math classes and helps work with kids to get through some of the basic struggles in math. Fractions. Algebra 1, College of Prep, and Honors Algebra 2. Those are the three courses that are, are available freshman year. Um, so we want to make sure we get them placed, and I want to assure you, you can see 10th, 11th, 12th grade going across. Uh, that doesn't pigeonhole students into one way. If students have now reached a goal and they're really excelling in math, we can move them forward and up in a, in a math way, and, and vice versa also. So they're not just locked in. Technology. All the classrooms we use have smart boards, smart technology, and we use a variety of software. Uh, one of them is the smart notebook, which is excellent in math. It gives us a lot of tools for us to use. Um, and it, it, it definitely helps teach the math, and the, all the teachers in the math department use that and along with software that we've become pretty good using over this past year. Uh, Desmos is a, is a software that we use, Delta Math, GoFormative, and many more. I also want to say that we also have the tools for math, which is a calculator. We have classroom sets for kids. So we believe that, you, you know, if you're going to get the job done, you're going to need your tool set. Some extra stuff that we have. We do have a math team, and all are welcome to join and they're in the Massachusetts Math League, and there's also uh, a vocational math league, and we also participate when the students want to in a Skills USA in, in the math form there. We have MCAS prep classes for students on Saturdays, and we also have after school, and then we have a, a, another occupation, which is something that's later for students when they're looking to go to college. And what, what, what's Minuteman about? Well, it's the academy, it's the integration. Our math department uh, has the resources right there available throughout the school. And we reach out and we integrate with them. So we do math lessons in cosmetology, the trades and transportation, DVC, where we do some scale factoring with them. Uh, we do an engineering model with the rocket and physics. And this past year, we had uh, a, a World Bee Day where uh, the horticulture department had beehives, and we discussed the honeycomb and the shapes of the honeycomb, and also um, best business practice in selling and, 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 and selling honey and, and what makes it work. So um, I'll still be here. I'm going to head in, 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 into the room. So if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Next up is our Bill Nye the Science Guy, Eric Marshall. Thanks, John. Hi, my name's Eric Marshall. I'm the lead for the science department here at Minuteman, and we have a fabulous science team here. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we're all about. One of our big things is we try to focus all our instruction in small group cooperative environments, whether it's lab work or problem solving or just study groups. We try to get them together so that they can help each other in, in a peer environment while we can also kind of individualize our instruction with, these, uh, w with their students. We do claim and evidence writing, which means we try to, whether it's a lab activity or just a bunch of observations that they make, we try to teach students how to draw their own conclusions from data. Once they have those conclusions, we then make them go back and say, why did you come up with that conclusion? We call it claim and evidence, and it's stopping kids from just learning facts and equations, but making them actually 
think about what they're learning. And it's w whether they're taking biology or physics or chemistry, we're teaching them scientific thought. Integration, you've heard a lot about because we're not a traditional high school. We're a vocational school, and we take advantage of it by just walking across the hallway all the time and seeing what the other half, the other half of our building is doing. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about some of our different science offerings that we align by the pathway that your students are going to choose when they come here. Uh, all of our students start with biology, and they take that for the first two years at um, honors and college prep levels. After they pass that biology MCAS, we open up our offerings a lot more, depending on their course of study. All of our classes are open to them, but when we have students in environmental science or in child care or in Cosmo, we, we recommend courses like anatomy and nutrition and chemistry for them because that's what, what fits best with their line of study. With the engineering and construction trades, we have offerings like physics and applied physics. Any student can take any course, but we do kind of focus the topics that they're studying in their vocational shops with what they're doing in academics. I'll talk a little bit about what integration looks like in the classroom. In physics, I teach work, energy, efficiency, and mechanical advantage, while on the shops they teach hoisting and fall protection. At the end, we can put it all together, and a student can, with one hand, lift his buddy up to the ceiling with some of this fall arrest harnesses and, and a multi-pulley system. In physics, we deal with stress and strain forces that act on an object. In the shops, they constantly have to drill holes in walls, floors, and ceilings. And we put that together into a, a multi-day experiment where they're learning about the building codes of how to safely bore or penetrate um, the walls and floors. Another experiment that we just got off the ground this year was working with high voltage electricity to essentially burn through wood uh, that has a high resistance. Dealing with high voltage means we've got to look over to the electrical wiring shop to find those, those safeguards for it. So this was our, our, our new project that we're, we're pulling together. Um, so that's a little bit about our science department. Next up, Mr. Donovan. I've just been told that I have to do the medium presentation. So I've done the 38 second one, I've done the full one, and now this is the medium one. And if you want a copy of the, uh, the full one, feel free to Venmo me 1995, and I'll be happy to send it out. Uh, my name is Greg Donovan. I'm the lead teacher for the English department. This is my 25th year here at Minuteman. I'm also the head golf coach, and I lead the Minuteman Players, which is the school drama club. The department that I lead consists of nine highly professional English teachers, one of which is a highly skilled reading specialist. The, the important part that I really want to go over is the summer reading, which I hope you grabbed a copy of that book on your way in. Freshmen begin their English careers here at Minuteman with a shared experience by reading the same short novel for summer reading. The novel is called Buddha Boy. It's by Kathy Koha. It's about bullying and peer pressure and the need for tolerance. Below the surface, however, this shared reading experience will actually act as a springboard for discussions in the English classrooms about the school's no tolerance policy. One of the things that's important is that you understand that your students need to complete three study guides this summer. These three study guides will aid English teachers in another writing assessment. The other important thing is your students can use these study guides on the summer reading test, which will actually increase their scores. The department offers two summer reading test dates. These are optional, one on July 14th and one on August 4th. Why would you want to do that? Well, some students like to get it out of the way. Another reason is if one of your students takes the summer reading test in the summer, if they're not happy with the grade, they can retake it again in September. So it's an extra opportunity to get a higher grade. And it does count for 15% of the student grade. Now I'm going to go through things really fast. We use a classic and contemporary titles. That's probably a big surprise. Most schools are doing that anyways. Um, hopefully what we're doing is helping the students out on their testing skills for MCAS, ACCUPLACE, or SATs, etc. And I hope I'm going fast enough, Anthony, for you. One of the big things is the skills that we work on in the department are transferable. At least we hope they are, and that the students take these skills out into their CT years and into their other academic areas. 
Um, we use the John Collins writing model. Um, much like the other departments, you're gonna see honors, college prep one and college prep two. And most importantly, by the time we get to junior and senior year, students will have opportunities to take dual enrollment courses and AP offerings um, should they so desire. And um, Ms. Dempsey mentioned Ms. Camagna, who is the freshman guidance counselor. Ms. Camagna works on goal setting with all the freshmen during their English classes in September, so that's an important aspect of it. You'll also find your students will be doing journaling about their freshman exploratory, which is an important reflection process as they hone in on which major they're going to go into. And then I'm just gonna go really quickly through some other things. Uh, these Romeo and Juliet masks are a project that we do when we study Romeo and Juliet, and the students are actually using materials from the vocational major to come up with these masks, and we start to do a lot of integrative projects as well. And that's about it. Again, Venmo, 1995, send it to me. <laughs> Anthony Chiarello. Now I know all your kids. Perfect. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you to everyone for your presentations and all this information. Again, we will send this PowerPoint out to you. We'll send the recording of the presentations out to you. We'll send everything in your folder out to you as well. So if you lose it or misplace it, you know, don't worry. Don't lose the summer reading book, please. But um, aside from that. <coughs> so just I'm going to do a couple of quick ones here that are just logistic informational pieces. So computers. So all students get laptops here. They get laptop laptops. They do not get Chromebooks or netbooks. The level of software that a lot of our programs utilize will not run on a Chromebook or a web-based uh, device. You do not need to buy insurance. We have insurance. You do not pay for the laptop. And we will also provide you a Minuteman I think it's still branded, but a Minuteman backpack that can hold a laptop. So it has a, sl a slip in it um, that will protect the laptop. So you wouldn't have to buy like a cover or anything like that. So we take care of everything on that end. Um, our IT department is accessible both by phone and you can enter like a ticket if you prefer to do that through the school website. I told you kind of in your, on your contact sheet, it tells you how to do that. But again, I'll, I'll send you that information as well. If you come to the Introduction to the Revolution program, which is the first week of August, <clears throat> we will hopefully be deploying laptops at that time, but don't worry, you won't need them, right? So if you don't come to that program, we'll get you them on freshman orientation. Freshman orientation, AKA the first day of school for freshmen is August 30th, it is a half day. Buses run that day, so you don't need to you know, get your students to school or anything. And it's a good day, they walk their schedule, they meet their academic teachers, um, you know, orient to the building, Ms. Camagna will meet with them. It's a good start, um, you know, to getting familiar with what they'll do when they start um, on August 31st, which is the official first day of school for all students. Um, and for the Labor Day holiday, we have the Friday and the Monday off. So I apologize, the school calendar, I will get it to you as soon as um, there were a few tweaks that had to be made, but um, we'll get that, I will email you all that um, once it is finalized. Um, we have a bunch of clubs and activities, um, a lot of them you've heard about. I'm, I'm not going to talk about these right now. Um, <coughs> two clubs that I am going to mention are Skills USA, which I talk about in the parent presentation, which is the competition within vocational areas as well as professional skills. I point this out because um, it's totally unique and different than any other high school. They do not have this program. And we have our student leadership team from Skills USA. They're here, they're in the Paul Revere room, so you can touch base with them if you think that might be something your student would be interested in. Also our newest club, which is the first robotics club. Um, the students asked us if they could be here and they're, they have a great setup in there. So if you have students who are, you know, you don't have to be in the robotics shop to be in the first robotics club. You could be in culinary, you could be in uh, horticulture and plant science, whatever you want, but if you like to try a little robotics, you can, you know, participate in that club as well. Uh, so they're both in the, in the, the room next door. Uh, a note on school lunch, always a question from families. Um, according to um, Lucille Barker, who is our head of nutritional services, uh, school lunch will, will continue to be free this upcoming school year as it was this past school year. Um, if your student wants like a second lunch or like a drink that's not within the federal guidelines or like what I used to call extras, right, like the food that my parents wouldn't send me to school with, um, you can use either, you know, cash at the cash register, you can send a check to um, Minuteman School Lunch, I'll give you all this information, don't worry, um, or use the My School Bucks app, which there's a little handout in your packet for that as well. It looks like some people may already be familiar with that, so just wanted to let people know about that. So now we're gonna move on to the 
you know, the next part of this time period. And you can use this time period however you like, meaning if you need to get going, we're so glad you came. I'm glad you got to hear this information. Your students got to meet, you know, some of their future classmates. They're, they literally just, for lack of a better word, just had their first school lunch together, right? They got to meet, they got to, you know, play some games. They were eating over here. So that's where they are. So you can, you know, pick them up in there. Um, but we have an opportunity to meet a bunch of our staff members that, you know, may have some information for things that you or your students are interested in. So I'm gonna introduce the folks and they're gonna wave to you um, just so you know who they are. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and just so you know, on the back of your, or your agenda is all their names and their what they do here as well. So first, before I introduce them, the Minuteman Parent Association is currently here as well. They're, they have a table back there, so please sign up. Courtney and Sarah are back there. Um, it's a really strong organization has just continued to get better um, over the course of the years. So uh, I have, I'll just do it off my list here. So I have Nikki Devereaux, where's Nikki? She over there? Oh, great. I shouldn't, I can't see over here. So Nikki is a, one of our math teachers. She's also the boys soccer and girls basketball coach, so can answer questions on athletics as well as those two specifics. Michael Garino is our transition chair, um, special education teacher, special education lead, along with Ashley. Um, so if you had a transition meeting for an IEP, you've seen him before, and he's happy to speak with you again. Um, next to him is um, Constantine Georgopoulos, who is one of our special education teachers. Then I have John Skogstrom, who is one of our math teachers. And for those of you who have students who are like at a really high level of math and might want to take like, you know, AP classes, he's the AP calculus teacher, also teaches our, you know, upperclassmen some of the higher level math classes. So he's a great resource to talk to. I have Joe Jonkis next to him. So Joe is, he teaches entrepreneurship and financial literacy and all students take those classes here as part of their career in technical education. Um, he is also the pathway lead for communications and media as well as engineering and production. So he can answer questions on a lot of the programs. Um, and on your sheet, it tells you the programs that are, are part of that. He's also the boys hockey coach. So if I have any hockey players out there and you wanna know some information, uh, Mr. Jonkis will be happy to talk to you about that. I have Allison Berry. Allison is our design and visual communications teacher, which is arguably one of the most popular programs in our school. So I know a lot of, I'm talking to your students, I know a lot of them are interested in that program. <coughs> uh, Erin Bordeaux, who is our art teacher. So she does the art elective classes that happen during the core academic week. So she can talk to you about the art program. She also does a lot with student activities. She was the senior class advisor, does yearbook. I'm probably missing something because she does a lot of stuff for our school. Um, so. That's a great person to talk to. Uh, then Ms. Sarah Ard. Ms. Ard is our horticulture and plant science teacher and is the pathway lead for the um, agricultural, environmental, and life sciences pathway. Then next to her is Mr. John Primpas, who is our automotive technology teacher. He is the parent of a current Minuteman student and is also an alumni of Minuteman. So he runs the gamut of information about Minuteman. Uh, Ms. Tina Collins is our robotics and automation teacher. Uh, so she, she definitely can talk about both robotics and automation as well as the engineer, the whole engineering pathway um, over there. Did I sell you too much there, Ms. Collins? She can do it. <laughs> um, and then I have Ms. Gah Sarah Gahan, who is one of our school psychologists, but also is the one of our point, our point person for social emotional learning. So if you have questions around that, she's a great resource. Then there's um, Chantelle Schonauer, who is our, one of our English teachers, but runs the reading program. So if, you know, if, if your student may need some support um, in reading, um, we do, it's, it's a phenomenal program. There's a, we won an award from the Mass Reading Association, the first high school to ever receive that recognition. And that's because of the great work that um, Chantelle and all the teachers do. So feel free to talk, to reach out to her. Um, we have Al St. George, who is our electrical wiring teacher, another one of the most popular programs in the school. He is also the pathway lead for the trades and transportation, um, excuse me, pathway. And then finally is Miss Cindy DeMaio. I always say it wrong too. DeMaio, DeMaio, potato, potato. Um, <laughs> and I always ask the right way and I always forget. Um, she is our cosmetology teacher. She's also the pathway lead for the health, hospitality, and human services pathway. So <clears throat> a lot of people you can you know reach out to. I'd love for you to talk to each other. One thing that our parents last year really felt was lacking as a result of COVID was they just didn't get to meet each other, right? So 
those folks who come from schools like, you know, Arlington or Lexington or Needham, like those are huge schools. Like there's like four or 500 kids in your eighth grade class. So that your, your children may have gone to school with each other for the last eight years and you may not know, you know, some of the folks who are coming to school here. So it's great. This is our first opportunity to be a community. So we're incredibly excited for you to be here. Um, I hope you get a chance to meet each other. Your children are either in the Paul Revere room or the courtyard here. Um, they've been out with the peer leaders, do, you know, joining our Minuteman community. So thank you so much for coming out on a Sunday. We're so excited for you and for your children to start their journey here at Minuteman. So thank you very much.